Hi there. Uh, I'm just going to have to adjust my iPad so that it doesn't go off every five minutes. Uh, let me just do that here. I'll be right with you. I'm going to talk about learning words today. And uh, but it, it, here we go. Display brightness on my iPad, and it says uh, blah blah blah. Where is it now? Uh, auto lock. We want to go never, so it doesn't shut off while we're doing this. Because I rely on my iPad to see the questions that uh, people uh, submit, because I can't see that on my feed here. So, and that's why in any demonstrations I do, I, I use the computer. But of course. Most of what I do on the computer, I can do on our app in my uh, in uh, either iOS or Android. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you to all my viewers on YouTube. I now have 150,000 subscribers, so that's nice, I guess. I don't know between 149,000 and 150,000. Big deal, maybe. Um, now, I often get asked, "How do you memorize vocabulary?" How do you learn words? How do you learn when at the beginning you know no words? And so this got me to thinking. So I'm gonna ramble a little bit and then I'm gonna demonstrate on the screen. So the first thing is, um, if I think of my Arabic or Persian, I actually know quite a lot of words. Um, 2,500 words in Persian, closing in on 8,000 words in Arabic. Now, you can challenge these statistics. It's not very scientific. It's just the way, it's just the way Link counts them. Um, but the fact is, as I will demonstrate, if I bring an article in from Al Jazeera in um, Arabic or something similar in Farsi, I actually know a lot of the words there. So I have learned these words, but I haven't memorized them. I have put zero effort into memorizing them. I don't memorize. I have done some random flashcarding, which I will also demonstrate as I turn the page in my lessons. But I haven't tried to memorize. And to me, flashcard is just sort of concentrated exposure to some words and phrases. I don't try to memorize them. I don't test myself on them. I just expose myself to them. And gradually, the words stick. So that's the first thing to say. The second thing is, uh, while making breakfast, I was listening to story number 56 in Persian because I'm in my Persian part of the week right now. I was in my Arabic for the first part of the week and actually understanding more and more of these, uh, you know, podcasts that are live, authentic from uh, France 24 Arabic out of France or Al Jazeera. I'm understanding more and more of them and I'll show you how that is happening. Uh, but so I realized that I understand more and more. Uh, and uh, with the mini stories, of course, I find the mini stories very powerful. If I start a new language, that's what I would use. I'm on story 56 now in Persian, and there are some words there that I, I simply don't know what they mean. I know the story because I've done the story in other languages, so I can kind of guess at what the word might be, depending on where in that sentence it shows up. But as I listen to the story, and the story, of course, repeats the same vocabulary with a different person or a different tense, and then the vocabulary is repeated in, in questions. And so I hear it again. And of course, the way we learn vocabulary is, to my mind, is when the other pieces of the puzzle, of the jigsaw puzzle, are there, because I know, like, say in this, I'll show you the Farsi or Persian story that I'm listening to, I know most of the words, but there's a, couple of dozen words there that I don't know. And so I hear them. I hear them again and again. And as I listen to them and I miss them, I have a rough idea what they might be. Then I become very curious to go and read that lesson and in order to go over those words again and then listen again. And so that is how the mini stories through sort of this process of repetition and, and listening to create curiosity and then reading and saving words and reviewing the words and listening again Gradually, the result is that in my both my Arabic and Persian mini stories, all of the words in the first 40 lessons, I know them. That's all part of my vocabulary. Many of them I can use because I've heard them so often. I use them in conversation with my tutor mostly. So, so the process is not one of memorization. The process is one of exposing yourself to uh, 
a variety of material, bearing in mind that, you know, 70%, whatever, 50, 60, 70, 80% of the content will be high frequency stuff that shows up all the time. And this then becomes the framework around which you then pursue these more specific words, all right? So that's by way of introduction. And now I'm going to share my screen and talk a bit about what I do. And then I look forward to your questions. So, all right, here we are. And I'm going to share, hopefully this is the screen that I want to share. And desktop two, start screen. Okay, present to everyone. So now, it's just that I was going to demonstrate, I went to this uh, part, uh, Persian website to import a, uh, but before doing that, here's what I want to do. Let, mm, let us open another tab in uh, link here. Okay, it takes me to my Arabic, but I'm not going to do Arabic. I'm going to go to Indonesian. Indonesian is a language that I have not done at length. And uh, we at the present time, we have 35 mini stories uploaded, and I think we'll eventually get to the 60. We have to have 60 mini stories, or we would not have uh, launched this as a language. So they must just not have been uploaded yet. So if I open this, uh, then I see the stories, and of course, it's 100% unknown words. I don't know a single word in Indonesian. So I open the first story. Now, one thing, one advantage I have, of course, is that I know the story, because I've done this in Greek, in Persian, in Arabic. I think I've played with it in, in Slovak. So I know the story, but nevertheless, but I do know from experience that, first of all, Indonesian has the tremendous advantage of being written in the Latin alphabet. Advantage for me, because the Latin alphabet, of course, is the alphabet that I am most familiar with. Uh, for a native speaker of Chinese or, or of Russian, uh, that may not be the case. For a native speaker of Russian, obviously a language that's written in the Cyrillic alphabet is going to be much easier. But, uh, so, all of this is unknown. You'll notice the numbers are not highlighted because we don't count numbers as part of your sort of growing known word total. But I know that if I were to spend a month going through these stories, all of these words here will become part of my vocabulary because everything I look at in, I'll show you in, in Arabic or Farsi, not everything, but most of the words there I consider known. So uh, how do you get from this to where they're known. Well, I begin by looking up words. Very cool. So, you know, following, okay. I have no idea how that fits cool. in with the... Uh, ini. Ini. Adalah. Now, one thing Adalah. that we have, that I get used to after a while is that where, this could be a name. So when there are names, the, um, the system or the, the dictionaries that we use and probably this is still in uh, Google Translate, uh, tries to translate the name. I presume the person's name is very good. Ina, Ini is Adala. Now, there are related phrases that I could, uh, these are phrases that other people have said, I might want to say. Berikut ini adalah. Now, that may even be a wrongly translated phrase. Let's see what we have in the way of dictionaries. We have Google Translate. And babla, that's all we have. Hmm, does babla, verb conjugator. Let's take this. Cerita. Story. All right. I think story looks like a very likely. Cerita. Dictionaries. Babla, let's see. Let's see what babla says. Cerita. Cerita in English, account, recital, tale, yarn, story. That looks pretty good. So I've added the Babla dictionary. Now, in many languages, we would have more dictionaries to choose from. Uh, it's, uh, that's okay. Very good, ini adalah cerita. cerita. So ini, ini. this adalah, adalah, this is cerita. A story, adi, adi si, si, the, si, 
cook. Cookie. Okay, cook. Cookie. All right. Cookie. So the following then. Berikut. The following. Ini. This. Adalah. Okay. So as you see, I'm working my way through this thing. It's just my the beginning of of trying to discover this language. Uh, I can listen to it. Berikut ini adalah cerita Adi si Koki. Cerita 1A. Adi bangun tidur jam 6 pagi setiap hari. Okay. So, just to show you what it looks like when I start a new language from zero. And I would be confident that in because the Latin and this is the Latin alphabet, I would say that a few months and I will plow my way through at least 40 of these stories, if not more. Okay, so then let us look at what do we got here? Which language? You're in Arabic. So if I go in Arabic to, um, let's say that I have, of course, my conversation reports, Al Jazeera podcast, I got Al, Al Asimil here, and we got the mini stories in standard Arabic. We also have them, by the way, in Levantine Arabic. But let's open these. So I still have, um, in story one, I can see that I have one word here that I don't completely feel that I know. Um, these are the sort of early stories, zero, zero, you know, four, one. Story 11, for whatever reason, there are some blue words there. I could open that one up and see what's going on. Uh, that's strange. And uh, that could be something wrong in our strange. It shows that no words that I don't know. So I know all of this. I know all of these words. I don't know why that show. Must best be a refresh issue or something. I don't know. However, now if I go to, let's say that I go to Al Jazeera here, Al Jazeera, click on Al Jazeera. No, that's not the Al Jazeera I wanted. I wanted, that's the learning, that's teach you Arabic Al Jazeera. I wasn't tremendously keen on that. So I go to Al Jazeera. And I pick something. All right. So here's this text. Then I click on the um, extension. And of course, I'm not in Persian. I'm in Arabic. And uh, this is Al Jazeera. So uh, where am I going to put it? Al Jazeera. As opposed to podcast where I have sound. So I import this. So now this is, you know, coming straight out of something that is intended for uh, an Arabic speaking audience. So I have 75 new words, but look at this, you know, not so many new words, lots of words that I'm in the process of learning, in fact, 90 of them in all, but a lot of white words, words that I already know. And that has been through a, a process of, of gradually learning the language in the way that I described. So the same would happen if I go to, uh, where are we here? If I go to, this is the uh, uh, Radio Free Europe. Uh, this is uh, Farsi or Persian. And if I now go to the import extension, and this is now Persian. And we're going to call this, they call this thing Fardo. And I'm going to import it. it. Takes a little while. Hopefully it'll work. Sometimes it doesn't work. Oh, there we are. So now Persian. Now, of course, Persian, I've really only been working on in any sort of concentrated way since January. So lots more blue words, but still yellow words and uh, white words, right? Now, one thing that I could perhaps show you, okay, I'm in, let's go to, uh, let's do it this way. We open this up, we go to, 
uh, view course. Oh, I should have shown you this. So while I'm in this, uh, it's worth knowing that, uh, first of all, I can add it to a playlist. I have already added to a playlist, but I've since removed it because I can only have 100 lessons in my playlist. Uh, but I wanted to show you that for all of these, uh, translations are available because they're mini stories. So if I go to where I was here, 56, I got 17 and 57. You know, here, as I'm reaching the end of these mini stories, there's lots of words. There's no new words because I've been through them a few times. But um, there are words that I haven't yet learned. So if I go to story 56, actually, I was doing it in Persian before, but we'll look at it. In yes, so people comment on how poor the text to speech is. It doesn't really matter because I listen to the actual natural voice. So she's very good, uh, the text to speech, but it does help. And it certainly is a disadvantage that in Persian we don't have text to speech. But typically in this lesson, what I would do is when I turn the page down here, I would go through the flashcards. So that's when I flashcard, when I'm sort of engaged with a piece of content, I want to try to nail things down. Uh, and then I would do the dictation, flashcards, etc. So I've kind of used up, uh, I'm wondering if there's anything else that I should, uh, no, so that's good enough. So uh, stop. And here I am back. Okay, so there you have it. Like, so it's this natural process of, um, of going through the lessons and listening, doing a lot of listening, uh, that enables me to acquire these words. And um, many of them, some are acquired through sort of deliberate flashcarding, but uh, many of them are acquired simply through um, listening, reading, and exposing myself to the words. All right, now let us see what we have here. And the way of questions. All right. Da, 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 da. Okay. Da, 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 da. Do you have any experience with translating or interpreting? What about it did you like or not like? Well, when I was working in um, Tokyo and even in Hong Kong after I finished my Chinese, first of all, we had to translate for our test. We had to translate from English to Chinese, from Chinese to English. So that was part of my preparation. Uh, we had to translate newspaper editorials from English into Chinese and so forth. Uh, when I was in the embassy in Japan and subsequently as a businessman there, I regularly had visitors from Canada. And so I was regularly in situations of interpreting as I was in China and, and uh, in Hong Kong. So, but this was sort of informal, uh, you know, not uh, whatever they call it. It's, it's sort of sequential uh, interpreting and not, uh, whatever the word is, I forgot. I don't interpret while the person is talking. I listen to the person, then I translate sequentially. Um, what did I think of it? Well, one of the bigger problems is that a lot of people don't speak their own language very well. So sometimes you have to interpret what they're saying. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just something you do. Uh, I'm comfortable in both languages. So I hear what the person has to say. And then I simply say it in the uh, language of the other participants. Uh, Steve again, Truku para aprender. You know, there is no Truku para aprender 30 idiomas. Uh, it's the same as uh, Truku to learn one language. A lot of listening and reading. Uh, but, but, but what is your username on the link forms? That's not addressed to me. Would you continue to do this question every few weeks or so after the night? You're highly enjoyable. Well, I, I could, you know. I mean, I do have my regular uh, videos that I've been putting out. I could turn one of the two into this kind of Q&A session. I think that's a good idea. Uh, we will talk about it. Uh, Faisal, hello, my teacher. How are you? I'm Faisal from Morocco. I'm beginning to learn English. Three months, I learn alone on YouTube. I have difficulty speaking English. You're doing very well, Faisal. You're doing very well. By the way, I enjoyed visiting your country. Uh, my wife and I were in Fez and took a bus up to Chef Shawan. 
lovely countryside, friendly people. We lived in the Medina, uh, <laughs> which was an experience, uh, but it was great. I enjoyed it. Uh, Are you ever worried that the content you read is too varied, making it less likely that you encounter the same words over and over again? Um, okay, the mini stories focus on the most frequently used verbs in the language, very important in order to speak. Uh, thereafter, I it, once I move out of the comfort zone of the sort of, you know, content for learning the language, and I move into content of interest, then, um, you know, I was listening and, and studying in, uh, from the uh, France Van Cat podcast, so I have done something on Brexit, which is a lot of economic terms, um, immigrants and refugee, Arabic immigrants and refugees in Europe. So that talks about refugees and immigrants. Uh, you know, the political situation in Algeria, uh, someone who's run, an Arab, a Palestinian who's planning to run for mayor in uh, Jerusalem. So there's a variety of different uh, topics there, but it's, it's kind of focused on my interest, economics, politics, history. So yeah, there's a certain amount of repetition. If I were going to, uh, I wouldn't venture into literature. I wouldn't venture into a religion. I wouldn't venture into, uh, you know, nuclear physics. So as long as I stay in sort of history, current events, um, I think I'm okay. Uh, if I understand correctly, a few days ago, you talked about releasing George and I link. Is that correct? Yes. We have someone who has volunteered to find a group of people to um, create the mini stories in Georgian. And if we receive these, uh, we have heard some audio samples, they're good. And so now they have to go ahead and do it. And if they do it, we will upload Georgian. Kokoro says, my listening ability has lagged far behind my reading ability. Do you have any tips for that? I've been struggling listening to readings I read months ago, which is boring to me, but it's all I can do. Well, you know, um, what I'm doing, obviously reading is, is you understand more when you read. In particular, if, if, as in my case, I read on my iPad or on the computer, I can look up the words, I can pick my way through it. But then having invested uh, that time in sort of deciphering what is to me difficult, probably for you reading is not difficult, but for me in Arabic it's, or Persian it's difficult. Then I listen to the same content. Uh, how do I get the transcript? There are automatic transcription services available that aren't very expensive. Uh, I, what I would do if I were you is I would find stuff to listen to that you like. Okay, and so you listen, you don't understand. Now what are you going to do? Get it transcribed. So look up, for example, Vocalmatic or look up automatic transcription and then for $10 a month or so, you can get a lot of stuff transcribed. And so you listen, you don't understand, now you're curious, what did I miss? Then you go and read it, you see what you missed. Sometimes you just couldn't hear it properly, sometimes you don't know the word. And again, the more of that thing you're listening, to the more of it you understand the easier it will be to understand the rest so it's a gradual it's this whole jigsaw puzzle thing the more of the pieces you put together the more you're going to understand so you do have to do a lot of listening but if you listen and don't understand don't just leave it try and get it transcribed and anything that's new and fresh like if you subscribe I could uh, show you how I subscribe to all these podcasts in different languages if you subscribe to a podcast service and you're getting fresh material, which you have transcribed, that's always better than doing something old. I have old transcribed podcasts uh, in Arabic. I'm not interested in them anymore. I'm more interested in the latest podcast. So I would rather spend a little money and get the latest podcast transcribed rather than going over again something that I've done before. Try and keep it interesting. The brain likes novelty. Um, okay, it's just a matter of time. What do you plan to do with him? Okay, no. have I noticed any similarity between Farsi and French? Yes, I have. You know, the use of the K or K, uh, there's some things in there. I mean, obviously, there's some long words, but even in terms of structure, uh, but there are similarities. You know, the use of the ro as a um, divider or sort of a marker of the uh. I guess the subject of the sentence is similar to Japanese. Uh, there are different similarities there. The more languages you know, the more you notice similarities between the new language and one that you already know. Selamat pagi. Okay. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. I think one reason memorizing is an effect is because you're studying the words out of any context and the one definition you're using might be misleading. I absolutely agree. Uh, you can look up a definition, but it's not a definition of the word. It's just a suggestion as to kind of what the meaning might be. And you have to see the word in different contexts before you get a clearer picture of the range of meanings that it can have. And that's again why I don't mind, as part of my learning, listening to my mini stories over and over again, because not only am I trying to get a handle on the words that I don't know, and, and I become more and more curious now to read it, to see what that word was, and I look it up and I know what it is, and the next time I hear it, I don't understand, don't know what it is anymore. But it's all the other words that you are getting a clear, the, the frame, the other words, you're also getting a clearer and clearer picture of those words. So, yeah, uh, um, you know, the dictionary definition doesn't do it. It's a step. It's a step. Yeah, Mairo Vergara, I agree with him. He's a great guy. And listen an hour a day, absolutely. Build up vocabulary every single day and don't try to memorize. Yeah, <laughs> from China, yes. And this emphasis on memorization, it makes it uninteresting. It destroys the motivation to learn the language. It's ineffective. It's, it's a waste of time. Um, I don't know why people do that. I don't see why you couldn't combine memorizing flashcards and learning words in context. Sure, I mean, if that's what you want to do. I, however you memorize words, I think it is a less effective way of learning vocabulary than simply exposing yourself to more and more of the language. And I do use flashcards, but not with the goal of memorizing them. I don't test myself. I don't, you know, look at the target language word and try and remember what it means. I don't. I just flash and go through it. It's kind of like a concentrated exposure to the words that I have still have trouble with. One thing I sometimes do in reviewing older lessons, rather than reading through the whole lesson, I'll just go through the flashcards, the words that I still have trouble with. It's just exposure. It's not an attempt to memorize. I try to learn five different words in a day, but it's not easy to remember all the words. No, don't expect to remember. This is from Yuvika Singh. Don't expect to remember, just expose yourself to the words. After you reach a very large book, do you mainly just import material? I find it for, in Spanish, there's pretty much nothing in the. Yeah, I would say even before 40,000 words, very early on, I am, I mean, I look to see what's in the a linked library, I follow the feed, I see what other people are studying. Sometimes there's things there that interest me, but it's so much easier to go on the internet to find podcasts, articles of interest, ebooks that you can import, ebooks for which there are audio books. So the internet becomes the library, ultimately. Uh, and that's why, not only the internet, but in particular things like YouTube, songs, movies, where there's closed captions, you can import those. Uh, in the end, Link is simply a platform. Now we provide, not everyone wants to look for content, so we also provide content in Link, but the really sort of motivated independent learner is gonna to wanna to go out and search for things. Yeah, I mean, Edward likes uh, Asimil, that's fine. Uh, Asimil is, it does explain the grammar. We have, by the way, uh, a grammar resource, and if you go uh, to your uh, profile, your picture, goes notifications, settings, profile, academy. Oh, that's not where it is. Then. Somewhere. Hmm, I can't remember where. Oh, maybe because in, in uh, Arabic we don't have a grammar. If I go to, uh, let me, I'm just looking at my screen here. If I go to Polish, for example, and I go to my profile, it's got a grammar guide. So in a lot of languages, the main languages, we have a grammar guide, which you can have a look at. Uh, do you need to buy premium in order to use these functions? Uh, you need to be a paying member, like uh, saving words and phrases, you're maxed out at, I think, 20 if you don't pay. And I think importing, you're maxed out at five if you don't pay. So it's, it's well worth it.
How do you put SMEL on your link? Do you have an easy way? I have my teacher set lessons on link, but it's a lot of work. Okay, what I did with SMEL is I, uh, because I bought SMEL, I actually approached SMEL and I said, could you give me a digital version so I can learn on link as well? I also said, would you allow us to sell SMEL uh, across link integrated with our system, which I think our learners would appreciate. And they hemmed and hawed and stuff, and they so far haven't agreed. Someone from SEML will be at the Polyglot Conference in Fukuoka. I'm going to try again. But what I did was I simply had, I, I transcribed the uh, audio files. For Arabic, I paid someone to do it, so that's very accurate. Uh, with the Persian, I went to the sort of automatic transcription. And there you get the odd word that uh, is not... Uh, correct, but it's pretty good, like it's well over 90%, and you don't get any punctuation, which is a bit of a problem at times, but the, the point is that uh, I can't share these, but for my own use, I was able, by getting the, having bought SML, owning the audio files, either paying someone to transcribe, which is expensive, or using the automatic transcription service, which is not quite perfect, getting them in to link as lessons, and then I, of course, add in the audio files so that I have the audio file for each lesson. Ah, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, I agree with Slappy White. I mean, you can do anything. You can try to memorize, you can do whatever you want, but you have to decide where you want to spend your time. Uh, how did you get a job at Link? Okay, Tokoro. Gonna be honest with you, mate, you don't know the grammar rules in your native language, so why should you learn whatever language you're learning? Yeah, I mean, again, it, it, it comes back to this idea of exposure. Uh, I see nothing wrong in reviewing the grammar. Uh, I think it's, it's kind of self-defeating to try to memorize the grammar rules because it's not, in the end, going to help you uh, that much. But to review them from time to time, it helps you notice certain things in the language. It helps to explain things that you have come across. Uh, blah, 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 blah. All things considered, you say English is more similar to German, Germanic, Germanic languages or Romance languages. Well, I think grammar-wise, it's, I think, more similar to Germanic languages, but vocabulary is more similar to, well, the most common words of English are more similar to Germanic languages. The more academic or whatever words are much more similar to Romance languages. Okay. When studying two languages, do you study one language in the morning and one in the afternoon? Okay. So uh, this is my first experience studying two languages sort of equally. I have in the past sort of gone 80% one, 20% the other. So what I chose to do was to spend the first half of the week in Persian and the second half of the week in Arabic. And I've stayed with, with that. Now, is that the best way to do it? I don't know. Uh, you kind of get into it, really get into it, and then you have to go to the other language. But I feel if I were to do two the same day, I would never really get into it. And if I were to leave one for two weeks and then go back to the other one, or seriously, study one for two weeks and go to the other one, I'm afraid I would slip too much. So I've chosen to go three days on, three days off. Uh, in the month of May, I want to go after improving my Russian and Ukrainian. So I haven't yet decided how I'm going to do that. I'm even thinking of sneaking in some Polish. We'll see what happens. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, some more uh, Indonesian, which I don't know. Okay, pushing from B2 into C1 and C2. Uh, yeah, I think that the, that the early stages, getting to like A2, uh, is kind of uh, not easy. It's a lot of hard work, but it happens fairly quickly, and you have the sense that you now have, have some understanding of the language. But thereafter, it's a long road. From B1 to B2 is a long road. From B2 to C1 is a long road, and so forth. And I think the main thing to do is to find things you enjoy in the language, enjoy the language, and just don't worry about your language, because it will improve if you continue reading and listening and speaking and occasionally reviewing the grammar. Uh, Uh, do any of the languages you know have an, have entire tenses only used in writing? Well, French, for example, uh, has that. Um, I mean, 
Chinese has a very sort of dense, concise form of the language which is used in newspapers, and it, it's kind of more different. Uh, all languages vary, you know, are a little bit different, you know, we're obviously more casual. That's why, I, for example, in any language, I find that, you know, excellent learning material for intermediates is conversations, natural conversations that are, that are then subsequently transcribed because we use less vocabulary when speaking. Whereas when writing, we look for more, you know, precise words and somewhat, you know, lower frequency words. But so in all languages, there's a difference between the spoken and written language. But in some languages, it's greater. So there is a tense in French and Italian that, uh, you know, that um, is, is only used when writing. Article 11 impact link. Uh, we're not worrying about it. Um, Right now, uh, we will see. Uh, I, I think we rely on people to be responsible and not share stuff that they don't have the rights to. We can't possibly police it. If it turns out that this that we can't we can no longer allow people to uh, to you know or you know maybe we have to set up a system where we review everything before it's uploaded. We'll wait to see. And what is your philosophy of life? You want that in three words or less? <laughs> You know, my philosophy of life is that, um, you know, enjoying life is very subjective and personal. And so you have to find things that value, that have value for you. Family, friends, food, travel, enjoying the colors that you see, the scenery, uh, and enjoying, you know, having valuable relations with people and helping people and uh, you know some sense of, of sort of reciprocity if, if you treat people well somewhere down the line other people will treat you well and if everybody is helpful to everyone then it's a nicer place to be and don't take advantage of people um now hello steve is it possible to add languages spoken by two million people in link if we can provide enough content i mean bashkirian okay uh, interesting question. Um, you know, we added we added Bulgarian, which is more than two million people. We added Gujarati, which is I don't know 30, 40 million people. These are not languages in high demand. Uh, I think we could add uh, Bashkirian. Uh, I don't know. You know, it comes a point like uh, so. Bashkirian, I presume, is written in the Cyrillic alphabet. I know nothing about Bashkirian. I don't know how similar Bashkirian is to Tata. Uh, we have Turkish. We can add other Turkic languages. Turkish, of course, is written in the Latin alphabet. Um, I mean, I'm not against it. If we get the 60 mini stories done, then we have to, you know, honor our commitment. We will put it up. Um, absolutely. So, yeah, if you can get that done, we will put it up. Uh, the answer is yes, we would. Um, Uh, okay, some Indonesian going on there. Why does it cost too much to talk and link? It, the thing is, the tutors can set their own rates. So if someone says uh, that the tutor is willing to talk for $10 an hour, uh, link takes 15%. So that's standard. I talk is the same. And the tutors set their own rates. Currently trying to decide between learning Finnish or Hungarian. They're both compelling in terms of culture and linguistics, but having a tough time deciding between two. There's not much I can say. How often should I be reviewing words and link? I don't think there's a rule. I just tend to review them. You know, when I'm going through a lesson, if, if I have like 30, 40, un, uh, you know, yellow links in that lesson, that's too much for me to go through and review. But page to page, I might do it. Uh, I do it when, the, when I feel like it. There is no... There, I don't think there is a rule. It's the thing about it: reviewing words, reading, listening, talking. These are all a variety of activities that we can uh, get engage, you know, engage in. So variety is good. So sometimes I don't feel like reading. Sometimes I want to just flip through my flashcards. Uh, the key thing is to stay active with your language. So there is no, there is no rule there. We got some Indonesian going here. Any recommendations for exposure where you are studying a non-written language? 
I'm studying Tunisian Arabic and struggle with how to review words. And not much I can say. I mean, there, Asimil, I think, has a book on Tunisian Arabic. Uh, so you'd have to look for resources like that. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know. Uh, I, because the strange thing in the Arab world is that everything that is written is written in standard Arabic. And yet, in each country, they speak a slightly different or very different version of the language so I, I can't help you there ah, I think you're giving advice for those who learn for fun if not for fun uh, memorizing vocab is necessary I wonder if you didn't memorize vocab when you were being paid to learn Chinese um, not really not really like uh, I think with Chinese and and uh, to learn the characters you are talking about a form of, of memorization and I've explained before that for the first thousand characters, what I did was write them out. You know, I had flashcards, I'd write them out, put the flashcard down, write the next one out, put the flashcard down, and then pretty soon have to write the first one again. And I went through this every day. I would put in 30 minutes to an hour into learning characters. It's very specific. Uh, any, any alphabet type writing system where you, there's 30 or 50 or 25 letters, you don't have to do that. Just by reading the language, you gradually get better and better at reading the language. After my first thousand characters, uh, every time I came across a new character, I would just write it out a few times. And after I saw it often enough, uh, I was able to learn. It. So, uh, you know, this sort of distinction of whether you're doing it for work or for pleasure, uh, I think th the learning process is not so different. Uh, Okay, should someone have B2 after one year? Uh, um, I don't know what that means, uh, in which language, uh, so forth. No, wait a second, where are we? Here? I lost my place, it somehow popped out here somewhere. Wait a second, let me pop back here. Ah, should someone have B2 after one year? Uh, I think if it's a, a language similar to one you know and you put in a lot of time, you can do it. I had full-time exposure to Chinese. I think I achieved B2 after one year. First time I got uh, still learning language like crazy. All right, Andrew, thank you. How can I become better at using more complex words and not just be able to understand them? Well, ultimately, if you hear them more often, read them more often, see them in phrases, you'll eventually start using them. And don't hesitate. Don't be reluctant to use them, even if you're not entirely sure that, that it's the appropriate place to use it. Eventually, sometimes, you know, you kind of hesitate, is this the right place to use the word? Just go for it, and eventually you'll get a better sense of how to use them. How can, without memorizing, and analyze, and listening two hours per day, I don't like grammar, I'm just reading and review, is that good or bad? Please give me the right way, please, I'm learning English. Okay, I mean, Hamza, yeah, you gotta trust the system. Just keep reading and listening, uh, I would review the grammar from time to time, and the more you listen and read, the more familiar you are with the language, the more useful the grammar explanations will be. Uh, yeah, reading more complex material, that will give you more complex words. In my experience, it just comes with time, yes. Okay, people complain about grammar even though it's not easy. Yeah, I don't understand. What do we do if we're in a hurry to learn a language? Spend more time at it. Uh, are you concerned with the difference between active and passive listening? Um, I'm not entirely sure what that is. Uh, when I listen, most of my listening is done while doing other tasks, and I fade in and out, uh, and that's kind of why I listen. I never sit down and say, okay, no, I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna listen. I don't do that. So I don't know what, what the definition of active and passive listening listening is. If passive listening is just to have some noise on in the background that you don't understand, that I don't think is very useful, and I don't do that. Okay. Well, phrasal verbs is just another form of, it's another phrase, it's another part of the language. With enough exposure, you will get better uh, at, at understanding them. Um, you know, a phrasal word, verb, if it were a one, you know, composite word, then it's just another item of vocabulary. I don't see that as a problem. Uh, the lack of people to speak to is a problem. 
And um, so, uh, you know, try to find people online to talk to. Eventually, and uh, I see from your written English here that your English is very good, uh, eventually you have to find someone to talk to because to speak well, you have to speak a lot. Now, if that opportunity isn't there, I wouldn't worry about it. I would continue to build up my potential comprehension vocabulary so that when the opportunity does arise, you can take full advantage. The Georgian translations are done. We are waiting on the final recordings of all 60 mini stories. So the person who was asking about Georgian, Rich, who's coordinating the project with our man Zoran in Serbia, he says that we're waiting for the recording. So that's good news. Thank you, Rich. Phrasal verbs nightmare. I don't see the, of course, I'm not a learner of English, but the phrasal verbs, I think I would just treat them and they exist in other languages, even though sort of certain common verbs show up, get, take, whatever, uh, ignore that and treat the whole thing as a, as a separate vocabulary item that has to be learned on its own. And uh, the fact that it includes uh, give, take, put, whatever common verb is, is kind of a, a hint to hang your hat on, but don't, don't assume you know the meaning just because you know one of the words in the phrasal verb. So you look it up every time. If I'm on link, I say that, if I'm learning English, I say that phrasal verb. I don't make any assumptions about the meaning of that phrasal verb. Uh, ba -ba 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 so yeah, phrasal verbs exist in German as well. How often do you review your links? When the answer, when I feel like it, do I, no, I don't complete the, the cards that are due. I, I, I don't do that at all. I, I only review in conjunction with a lesson that I'm studying. And I do it uh, on a random basis. I enjoy doing it. Yeah, here, here, another person confirming. You have to treat them as verb, as, as words. Yeah, they're just words. Uh, the phrasal verbs. Are you left? <laughs> no. Is it, it's difficult because in Portuguese language, they simply don't exist. Um, I would have to check through Portuguese to make sure that, uh, that there's no phrasal verbs. Uh, I bet you there are. I bet you there are. Uh, but I don't have time. Uh, do you have hmm, opinions of AJ, ATT? I get asked that a lot. I simply don't know. And I wouldn't want to give an opinion without knowing the subject in depth. Do you have any tips, keywords for finding intermediate level transcribed conversations? All of the ones I have found are at A1, A2 level. I don't have any tips on that. Uh, we did, you know, we have in the past asked our members to talk to their friends, uh, spouses, whatever, children, uh, natural conversations, and then uh, transcribe them. We have at Link, we have our Link podcast, which we paid people to do, which are natural conversations. Uh, obviously, the, you know, the podcast at Al Jazeera, Front and Cat, those are natural conversations. They're a little difficult. Uh, I used to, I used a lot of uh, Echa Moskvi, uh, Echa Moskvi, because there's so many interviews every day when I was doing uh, Ukrainian from Maske Radio. And now, by the way, because I found this automatic transcription service, I will uh, get those transcribed. Um, the ideal thing would be if more link members would produce more natural conversations in their native language with people around them and transcribe them. Now, because uh, it's easy to speak, it's more work to transcribe. Anyway, if we can get those transcribed, that would be great. I uh, did an hour of listening while walking. That's the best way to do it. Can you tell me about, oh, someone asked me somewhere what my level was in Chinese. Anyways, uh, I think it was Chinese. I don't know. I've lost that. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I, I think that was the question, but if someone, if that was the question, I think I'm probably a B2 in Mandarin Chinese. Do you have any tips for five languages? Approximately, uh, here it is, no, no, Korean. What level are you in Korean? Okay, system tells me I know 40,000 words in Korean. Uh, I can fight my way through political podcasts, podcasts on literature. I struggle to speak. Uh, I think I'm a B, I'm a sort of between B1, I'm, I, I'm past B1 and working my way towards B2. And uh, I am committing myself 
to, uh, when I come back from Ukraine, I'm going to focus on Korea. I want to get myself to a solid B2 uh, in the summer, even though it means for the time being putting my Persian and Arabic on hold. Are you going to make more advanced mini stories as a sequel to the 61st? I, I would like to do that. Uh, I'd like to get maybe more people asking for it. Uh, maybe, you know, if uh, John K.R., I don't know what your native language, language is. Uh, if you would write mini stories, and I address this to anyone, uh, go see the pattern in the mini stories. Like we have a, a story in, say, a given tense or a given person, and then the same story in a different tense or different person. And then we have a series of questions about the story. And typically in the question, we provide the answer in the question, like uh, John went to the store, did John go to the store? So that you don't have to think about what was in this, the story. And so that's the pattern. So if people will write stories in their native language, English or anything else, on more complex subjects, business, travel, literature, whatever it might be, then that gives us a story for which we can then translate and have recorded in other languages. So John K.R., if you can provide us with some stories, we can work towards adding them in different languages. And uh, also tell me which languages you're most interested in. You can send me, anyone can send me an email, steve at link.com. Simplified Chinese versus traditional Chinese. Okay. When I learned Chinese, we started with the traditional and then we converted to uh, simplified in order to read the uh, material from mainland China. Don't forget I was studying in Hong Kong. And th there's not a huge difference. Uh, it, from memory, it seems a lot of the simplification simply takes the sort of cursive script, like the handwritten form of the character and makes that then the printed form of the character. Uh, I like the traditional characters. I must admit right now when I read them, I, I, I'm almost not aware of which one I'm reading. Uh, it's not there's, it's not such a big difference. Um, that's my thought on that. Uh, is the reading and listening and speaking without using papers and memorizing and that's enough? I'm not listening to as a big one hour for reading and speaking many stories after the same. Is, yeah, I mean, who knows what's enough? You have to put in time with the language. And... Uh, Occasionally review the grammar. Okay. Thank you for answering. Bashkir is very similar to Tar, but Bashkir has more sounds which are similar to Arabic sounds. Okay. Can you remember how to write Japanese kanji? I can't write them by hand. No, but I can write them on my computer. How to get unstuck in vocabulary volume in German. I mean, I think that's where Link really shines. You just have to do a lot of, of reading of more and more difficult content in a format like Link where you can look words up and, and then the system keeps them because otherwise you look a word up, you forget the meaning, you forget that you ever saw the word before and you have to kind of keep going back to these words in different contexts. And when you see them as yellow words, and then you see them in another context, in another context, and that's the gradual process. Uh, I, I think the vocabulary volume in German is no greater than in Russian or in Spanish or in English or Chinese. It's the same. Uh, what's your favorite reading matter in your target language? History. History. I find that this is from Sky Ren. Uh, history, definitely, because I'm interested in the language, the history, the culture and stuff. And uh, nonfiction is easier than fiction, so I tend to prefer history. At what point do you bridge the gap between understanding intermediate semi full speech and full-on native speech? It's gradual, and you'll suddenly notice some days you understand clearly, some days you don't. Um, yeah, it's just a gradual, gradual process. The brain, the brain learns. The brain starts sorting things out, but the brain learns slowly. Uh, Uh, ha, 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 ha. Have you ever considered to add dialects together with languages at Link? Well, we do have different forms of Arabic at Link, like Levantine Arabic and Egyptian Arabic, um, because the script is the same. Uh, again, the word dialect, like 
Who decides that Levantine Arabic is a dialect and not a language? I don't know. Why is Portuguese a language and not a dialect of Spanish, or vice versa for that matter? Uh, Danish and Norwegian and Swedish are the languages and dialects. It's all very, you know, arbitrary. Uh, if we have a request to put up a certain language, whether it's considered a dialect or not, we will certainly look at it if we get the many stories. Is it? No. Where are we? Have you ever considered? Okay. Is it true that Canadian accent is the easiest? A. <laughs> it's the easiest for me. Uh, I don't know. I think the Canadian accent is relatively neutral. So I find that for many people, say the Scottish accent or the Australian accent, or say uh, accent from the southern US would be considered difficult. And uh, the Canadian accent, which is similar to some Irish accents, by the way, is fairly neutral. Do I need to translate every foreign word into my mother tongue? No, I certainly don't. Ah, cheers from Ukraine. I'm going there in May, second half of May, Yuri, and I'm looking forward. I, I must have had a great time. I was in uh, Lviv, which is a lovely city, and traveled down to uh, the Carpathian Mountains and then to Chernivtsi, and then I was in Kiev, but this time I'm going to Dnipro, and I'm going to visit some people in eastern Ukraine who are helping, uh, you know, people who are suffering from the war there, uh, people that I've been helping a little bit, and then I'm coming back to Kiev and then in to Lviv to work on my Ukrainian some more. How long has the live been on for? Since we started the 90-day challenge, the 1st of February. Oh, today. All right, 52 minutes. Yeah, I'm kind of running out of time here. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Did Steve already tackle the topic? I came, th oh, which topic? Uh, I may have missed that. No. Merhaban. Okay, Merhaban. Do you think pitch accent is important when starting Japanese? I am actually quite fluent in Japanese. I, I uh, was able to do business. I understand it. I have never concerned myself with pitch. I wouldn't be able to tell you what pitch is. Okay, uh, impact on link, article 11 and 13. I don't know if it becomes a problem, we'll change how we allow content to be uploaded to our libraries. Uh, you know what? It's a very interesting question. Vocalmatic to do something like vo uh, volume discounts. Uh, I want to look into uh, what we can do with Vocalmatic or any number of these other uh, transcription services. I'm going to talk about this with Mark. I'm going to wait till I get back to Vancouver, which will be in mid-April. Still experimenting with the system. I think that's something that we need to look at how we can use these automatic transcription services to integrate them with Link. Good question, Ian. Full time. Hi, Steve. I just dropped by to say congratulations on 100k subscriptions. Thank you. I think you have to do a questionnaire to learn if people were one more advanced story stories. It would be great. My native language is Greek. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'd love to have some for Greek. Um, John KR. Um, yeah, again, it's, it's a project. Let me look at it uh, when I get back to Vancouver uh, about uh, adding more, uh, more advanced uh, uh, stories. And don't forget, too, that one of the things about the mini stories is that there's a very heavy focus on the highest frequency vocabulary. So, you know, at some point, but I think it is useful. It's easier for me to learn vocabulary in mini stories than if I go to a podcast and, uh, you know, uh, the vocabulary doesn't reappear that often. Um, yeah, somehow, you know, if, some, if, if yeah, I think, it's, I think it's something that I would like to do, but let me worry about it when I get back. Uh, all right. I think because we're now 10.59, it's gone on for an hour. Is it okay to become Japanese but not know the etiquette and do business in Japan? <laughs> There is no way you're going to be fluent in Japanese and not have a sense of the etiquette. Essentially, the, the, the amount of Japanese etiquette you need to know can be explained to you in five minutes. And it's not that different from, okay, you take your shoes off if you go into someone's house. When someone gives you a name card, you don't just throw it on the table. You don't throw your name card at someone. You give your name card, at least that's when I was there. Maybe they don't use name cards now. You receive a name card, you show an interest in it. 
you let people speak. Uh, you don't tell people how great you are. Uh, that's the biggest problem North Americans have is my product is the best and this is the best and we're the best. That doesn't go over well in Japan. So, I mean, I could explain all that in five minutes. The bigger problem is people who think that there's a major issue with etiquette in Japan. There isn't. Unless you, unless you are rude by nature, uh, you won't be perceived as rude by the Japanese. So, you know, this whole etiquette thing is blown out of proportion. To be successful in business in Japan, this is for Anton, you have to do what you say you're going to do. One of the things in Japan is, like there are culture, cultures where people overpromise. Yeah, I can do that, I'm the best, I can do this. That doesn't work in Japan. In Japan you say, gee, I don't know, I'll try my best, I'll, I'll try my best to, to you know, uh, uh, do what you're asking me to do. So that kind of understated approach and then delivering on what you say you're going to do, and that's true everywhere, but it's particularly true in Japan. Should I care about grammar writing systems learning Japanese? Just go straight on learning as many sentences and vocab. If you learn lots of sentences and vocab, your grammar will look after yourself. And in order to be able to read, which you need to do to learn vocab, you'll need to know the writing system. Have you ever attended Vancouver Entrepreneurs Group? And if so, no, I haven't. Salam alaikum. Okay, okay. <laughs> to be a good speaker, how many words should I have? Depends on the language, but normally 15,000. Uh, yeah, alaikum salam, absolutely. Okay. We're now over the hour. So thank you for listening and bye.